I don't think my outfit here says it all. If you're wearing stuff like this every day, then um, you know how I feel. It's a beautiful spot, though. Take off your socks and shoes and do whatever. And I'm gonna start with this upward tabletop. Coming into an upper tabletop, I really like it. It's a nice stretch and it's also um, really energizing for the body. You gotta use a little bit of muscle to stay up in this thing and um, it's also a great shoulder stretch. Had to hike a long way up to get to this spot. So I'm gonna stretch my legs out. I'm coming down, I put my right foot inside my left thigh and I'm coming down over my left leg in Janusur Sasana. It's a forward bend as you see. I'm trying to get my shoulders too, it's not necessary to do that. Get in the net, I'm gonna pick up that same leg, that's my left leg. This one's called Kronchasana. Yeah, the heron pose and it's just a hamstring stretch as you can see it is a lot like pyramid or a lot like half hanumanasana we're getting into that hamstring and if it feels better as i'm showing you here to hold on to a different part of your leg then do that it's fine you're just looking for that hamstring okay and then come down over the other leg in janashrasasana you've got that right leg out straight and you're bending your left knee Yep, and then straighten that leg. It doesn't matter how straight the leg gets, it just matters that you're finding a spot in your hamstring that it will release. And if you're pretty flexible, see if you can also find a little bit of release in your low back at the same time. And again, you can grab any part of your leg. All right, I put that right foot in front of my left thigh and I am twisting. I've got my elbow and my knee kind of pulling me into the twist a little bit more. Breathe in there. And then twist the other way. This reality, this new reality we're living in is tough to absorb. I'm looking at myself here and I, I mean, I can see it in my body. It's all right, it's all right if things are hard. Let's do some cat cows. Inhale, drop your belly, melt your heart forward. Exhale, cat tuck, belly bone to the spine, spine to the ceiling, sky, do it again. Yeah. Tower dog, nice. Wiggling in your dog, walking out your dog. And then plank, and then down dog. Just stretch in between these two a couple of times, inhaling to your plank. Exhale, down dog. And then stay in downward dog for a little bit. At this point, when I was filming this, this dude came trail running by. It was embarrassing. I felt like a goofball. But that's the way it goes. Alright, and then what am I doing? Step to the front of the mat. Let's do a flat back and then a forward bend. Again, I'm just releasing hamstrings, maybe trying to start to get into that low back just a little bit. Backs of the legs. I'm 
I'm doing that shoulder thing. I'm grabbing my arms and taking them up on my head. It took me a long time to want to do this. For the million years that I've been doing forward bends and stuff, I was pretty good with just the plain old forward bend. All right, take your right leg back and find pyramid. It looks like I've got my back leg a little bit bent. That's all right. I'm, I'm trying to angle myself into that front hamstring, that left hamstring. And then turning to the side, take your feet further apart, and we're going to come into triangle. Okay, so the, the relationship between pyramid and triangle, we were just in pyramid, and now we're in triangle, is the hips. In pyramid, they face forward, in triangle, they face to the side, and that is the just the beautiful thing about those two poses. If you get your hips exactly right, you're going to come into a really nice bend here. Triangle pose. And then I'm bending that front knee, coming into a version of triangle that's sort of in between triangle and uh, warrior two. And I'm opening my heart in the manner of Iyengar. You don't have to do this. This is um, Karsvakanasana. I also like to take my arm away from my head and see if I can find a neck stretch here. Maybe look for that. I'm doing the bind. The bind is not necessary. If you have pretty flexible shoulders, you might enjoy it. You'll know right away if you don't enjoy it. it just means you're grabbing your hands behind you, kind of threading them through your legs. Good, put your hands on the mat and step back to plank. Hanging on our plank. Core work. And then put your knees on the ground and your forehead on the ground and wag your tail in puppy pose. I'm calling this one absorption of the new reality. Absorption. Absorption. I didn't the sequence didn't make me absorb it all the way, but I guess I've felt a little better afterwards than before. Yoga is always about absorption. It's about absorption and about noticing. We're still breathing. Let's do some cat cows. Inhale to a cow lift and exhale. Cat tuck. Do that a few times. Mm -hmm. Downward dog. Right leg up. Downward dog splits. Exhale it between your hands. We're coming up to a high lunge. I like a high lunge. It's very grounding. Remember when we started in the beginning with that upward table? That's a really grounding pose too. High lunge. You're just, you're finding the ground here. And your legs are really muscular. And you'll know you found the ground right. When you don't feel like you're going to tip over. And you don't feel like any one of your muscle groups is doing too much. Certainly you don't feel like any of your joints are doing too much. And that's balance. Take some practice. Just keep looking for it. Good. And then what am I doing? Oh, come into pyramid. Oh, yeah. So this is pyramid on the other side. It doesn't look like it. I hope it is. This is pyramid on the other side. Make sure you're doing your other leg than you did before. Pyramid pose. Yeah. And then turn to the side. I'm coming into the triangle, and this should be triangle on the other side. So triangle is a hip stretch. And depending on the portion, proportions of your legs and arms, and also depending on the flexibility of your hips, some triangles are a little triangular-y, triangular than others. A lot of people I know can go all the way down to the ground. Go all the way to the ground if you want to, but don't mess up the alignment of your hips. It's 
it's really important to get those square. That makes them so pretty. And then bend your front knee. Here we come to Utita Prasvakanasana. First, I'm finding the Iyengar arm. I don't have any weight on my, on my hand that's on the ground, by the way. That's just kind of resting there. I am taking that upper arm forward and up over my ear. Getting a long side body stretch. Breathing. And I'm finding that bind just for a couple of breaths. It doesn't really change that pose that much. It, it just anchors your weight really firmly forward. It also gives a little shoulder stretch. Good. Step back to plank. I am taking my plank from side to side, wiggling out my plank, and then I'm hanging out my plank. Knees on the ground, forehead on the ground, Drag your tail, puppy pose. headstand. All right, I'm going to talk a little bit about headstand and maybe watch me do it, okay? So I'm lacing my hands behind my head and then I've got my elbows really close into my head, like in a triangle. The second when you lift off is the second when your core is like, yes, this is basically a core pose. I am doing this weird thing where I have my legs in different positions. For some reason, this feels more balanced to me. Um, you know, once you're up there, keep your legs however you want. I think I'm going to try and come all the way up. So the thing, the thing with headstand is that once you're up, it really is a balance, kind of like Tadasana, except upside down. Um, but getting there is the problem. Getting there is hard. you got to have a fair amount of core to get up there. And until you have a fair amount of um, shoulder and arm strength. Maybe maybe don't even do it because um, you don't want to hurt your neck. Let's do some cat cows. Inhale, cow lift, and exhale, cat tuck. Headstand is one of those poses that just builds out of other poses. You don't necessarily need to practice it. If you practice every other pose, all of a sudden you'll just want to do a headstand. It just comes. So, if you want to. All right, come up onto your knees and roll your shoulder blades back and down the back and open your heart. Yeah, we're gonna go into camel. And this is the part of the practice where I was like, all right, I'm having a good time. I was looking up at the sky and there was a lot of sun on my heart. It felt good. Come into your breath. And then come up, do some cat cows, inhale, cow lift, exhale, cat tuck, inhale, cow lift, exhale, cat tuck. 
And then, what am I doing? More cow lifts. Nope, down dog. Pick up your left leg, downward dog splits. All right, let's find the ground again. Time for a high lunge on the other side. And this time it's pretty cool. We just did a camel. And so the back is more open. You might want to find a little bit more of a back bend in your high lunge. You know, high lunge and warrior one are both back bends. You're finding this like real interesting stability in your legs and it's allowing you to open your heart. That's your first chakra and your fourth chakra. Having a little kind of conversation between those two. I'm breathing. And then step back. Oh, side plank. Looks like I'm on my left side. Opening into side plank. Um, you can move your arm around if you want to. If you're less of a fan of side plank than me, you might want to take that bottom knee to the ground or maybe take your top foot and put it on the ground in front of you. I don't like I just did. I, I put my top foot, that was my right foot, forward, and now I'm down here in lizard. Lizard is a really stretched out low lunge. You can have that back knee on the ground or off the ground. You can be up on your hands like I am, or you can come down on your forearms. It's a giant hip stretch. Make sure it's hitting you in the right spot. Yep. Oh, I'm going right to pigeon. So not everybody likes the transition from uh, lizard to pigeon. If you don't, do whatever you need in between. I'm coming to a high pigeon. Look how close it is to the um, high lunge that we just did. It's really kind of the same. It's a, I've got that front leg in a pigeon position. And I'm bending that back knee. And look at me, I'm gonna grab my foot with my hands. Huh. Not today. I am on the 30 year plan to grabbing that foot with my hands. It's not really close, but when we get there, man, we're gonna make our body into like a donut. That's gonna be a good day. For right now, however, we're doing some adductor strength and prepping for the low pigeon, which is nice, come down to your low pigeon. Hanging out in low pigeon. For a, for a while. Um, I'm, I've talked about low pigeon before, and I'm, I, if you've got this far in this video, you know what a pigeon pose is. But basically you're, you're bending your leg underneath you and arranging your body weight on top of it so that you're inviting gravity to open that hip muscle. If you feel anything in your knee, or you're not doing the pose right, you gotta flex your foot underneath you or rearrange your legs so that you're just opening the hip, just the hip. Okay, come out of that. 
We'll take that other leg from behind you. We're gonna come, oh yeah. Okay, so the leg that was behind you is gonna come all the way around and you're either gonna find cross-legged or um, half lotus. I don't know if you can see that I'm doing a half lotus there. That's the one where you got your foot kind of on top of the opposite thigh. You can do a full lotus if you want to or cross-legged is just as good as any of those. Oh, we did a long pigeon, and then we're going to do a long cross-legged forward bend. It's going to be great. You're going to be like, I'm so glad I did this video. Here it is. I don't think you can see it, but way up on the mountain, there are these white flowers, these little white flowers that just planted themselves, and they're so pretty. I think they're anemones. They are just magical flowers. There's no green yet, really, but the flowers are, are starting to come. When I was walking down the hill, trying to find a spot to film this, I ran into this woman who's always up there hiking when I am. She was like, really excited about um, like the dissolution of our culture that we're witnessing. She was like, it's the change, it's the shift that we've been working for. This is Black Mountain, this is how Black Mountain goes. I didn't even know this woman. She was telling me about the shift that I've been waiting for. Um, I do feel a shift and clearly we're experiencing a shift. Come on up. I don't know if excitement is what I feel. Put your hands behind you and roll your heart open. I'm doing this basking pose. You're opening your heart to the sky. Put your hands behind you in a way that makes that feel elegant. Oh, side plank, other side. Come to your side plank. Yeah, it's an interesting muscular pose. I'm doing some shoulder stretching. You can do shoulder stretching with that top arm if you want to. Remember, you can put your bottom knee on the ground if you want. It's basically the same pose, just a little easier. Good. Go back to plank. And taking that uh, left leg forward. Coming into the, um, what you call it? That long stretched out lunge thing, you know what I'm talking about? The um, lizard, lizard pose. You can have that back knee up or down. You can have your front, your arms straight or bent. Just wiggling into that hip, lizard pose. So I'm doing a lizard into a pigeon, which as I said, is not a transition that everybody loves, but I like it. You're stretching one way into the hip in the lizard, kind of like a straight up and down way. And then we're turning the hip to the side and we're gonna stretch into the side. But first, we're gonna energize those muscles of the hip by coming into high pigeon. I really enjoy high pigeon. Finding um, a back bend here. This took me a long time to be able to do. There's quite a bit of back strength involved. I mean, adductor strength involved in just standing on your adductors like that. You can grab your foot behind you if you want. That's a quad stretch. And then here I am demonstrating that thing that I can't do. Reaching behind and grabbing that foot. One day. Good. 
And then when you're ready, lay your body down. We're going to do a long pigeon on this side. We're going to do a long pigeon, and then we're going to do a long cross-legged forward bend, and that's going to be about it, I think. Shavasana. But between those three things, there's kind of a long time. We're going to... This is the absorption part. Hanging out here and absorbing. Doesn't mean you have to figure out. I actually think that absorbing something and figuring it out are two different maybe opposite energies. I'm just being with it. This other friend of mine told me that she thinks that the current, whatever it is, was caused by an excess of yang energy in our culture, an excess of heat. I think I could believe that. In all of my practices lately, I am really wanting to do a lot of yin. That's what you're doing right now. It's just kind of hanging out in your body. All right, so the back leg is going to come all the way around. I'm turning. You don't have to turn. Come into a cross-legged, or as you see here, I'm going into a half lotus. It's whatever. They're the same pose. It's just a difference of um, hip flexibility. You'll know. You'll know which one you want. And coming forward. I used to think that the best way to get into a lotus, which is a, um, a pretty big hip stretch, is to practice a lot of lotus. Um, but that turned out to not be the case for me. It ended up hurting my knee. I think the way to get into a lotus or any pose that requires some degree of hip flexibility is to go into an easier hip flexibility pose and practice that one, such as cross-legged forward bend. Like I was saying about headstand, all these poses just lead into each other. It's, you don't have to find the target ones and practice them. You can just do the ones that you're feeling, and that's going to lead you from one post to the next.
good and then come up. And everything's the same, but it's different. And you're swishing your hips back and forth, kind of doing whatever you need to do before Shavasana because it's time. Lay your body down. And Shavasana, as I'm always saying, is where it happens. The whole class is a lead up to the Shavasana. All right, wiggle yourself out of this. However you like wiggling your way out of Shavasana. And come onto your side and locate where your heart is in your body and feel it beating. And come to a cross-legged. Your hands to your forehead and breathe into your sinuses. Cells of your body all ringing in a good way. Take your hands to your heart, breathe into your lungs. I dedicate my practice to you. Thank you for doing yoga.